Here's a little bit different project than what I normally do, but this is one that I've been kicking around for quite some time. I got this table from my parents maybe 12 or 15 years ago, and as you can see, I've abused it quite a bit. I used it as a, an assembly table for a while, and uh, it is quite beat up, even had it outside for a while and the squirrels found it and chewed on the ends here. So my idea was to take off this plastic top and create a wood top for it. Taking off the legs was actually quite a bit easier than I thought it was going to be. There were just eight screws that held it into this plastic frame. What I didn't expect though was the frame was going to fall apart when I pulled it off. It took me quite a while to get it back together and I held it in place with clamps while I was working on it. But this was kind of funny when I first took it off, it fell apart. The wood I'm using, I think it's butternut. I'm not 100% sure. I was told it was butternut when I bought it from this person who had it stored in their barn for 10 plus years, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. If you think you know what this wood is, leave a comment down below. But anyway, it was straight enough where I could take it right to my thickness planer once I cut it down to manageable sizes. And I was able to get it down to just over about an inch thick or so. Then I was able to straighten up the edges. I did the first side off camera. But then I got to do some resawing on my bandsaw. This is the first time I've resawed on this saw, and it worked pretty well. I had to take it slow, but I got a nice consistent cut all the way across. And then I took it over to the planer again and got it down to uh, just under a half an inch thick, I think it was. Now I'm cutting this quarter inch plywood because my idea is, is that I'm going to epoxy this to the bottom side of the tabletop. My hope is that this will help to keep the movement down to a minimum because I will be using this outdoors from time to time. I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, but I'm, I tried it and if it doesn't work, I can build another one. So I was lining it up on the boards, trying to make sure that I had it completely square on the bottom. And then I marked that with a pencil. And once I was happy with where I had it laid out, then I mixed up some epoxy. And I poured it over the area. Here I am just clamping the boards together so I make sure that they are abutted to each other as the epoxy dries. I started in a couple of the knots. There were a couple areas there that I wanted to fill, but then I just poured it over the area and then spread it with a small board. I like doing it this way because it's, uh, it's I don't have to worry about that stick. I can just throw that out afterwards and it works well. Then I could place the plywood back on the boards. And then I placed these two by fours to help spread out the weight of the dumbbells that I placed on top of them. Then I let it dry overnight. I think it was a good 30 hours before I pulled this off again. And it came out actually quite nice. 
it was very straight and uh, the boards were nicely glued together. I didn't see any gaps in between. Then I did the same thing on the rails that I'm going to put underneath the table. I really didn't need to have plywood on there, but the thickness of the these boards were only half an inch, and I wanted them a little bit thicker just to help with the stiffness. So I glued up these uh, pieces of plywood onto uh, the boards as well. I epoxied some half inch plywood onto the frame. There were some bits of metal that stuck up, so rather than sanding them off, I decided to put on that plywood. And then I had to cut down the top to its final dimensions. And then I could glue on the bottom rails. Poured the epoxy on, spread it out, and then I placed those rails on. And then I actually uh, used a nailer to pin nail in the rails while the epoxy dried. And then it was on to sanding. I actually ended up doing a lot of sanding for this project. I'll explain that in a little bit. But here I was able to just to get it fairly flat. It wasn't perfectly flat and that was fine for this project, but it was nice and smooth and it had a nice looking top. And what I did is I wanted to minimize that movement, like I said earlier, of the wood. So I or epoxy on the top. And you can see I put masking tape around to help keep that epoxy from spilling over the edges. It also helped in a couple areas where I needed to fill some voids that were left. Um, as you can see right here, there was a little void right there. And this worked really well. Then I gave it a sanding afterwards and this is where problems started to happen <laughs> uh, as you can see I, I put on this spar varnish and uh, when i opened it uh, i saw it was kind of this milky white color and it was several years old and i, I hadn't used it but I thought, well, maybe it just will turn clear. Nope, it looked pretty darn ugly. And uh, oh, I was so frustrated. So I ended up, I tried to sand it off, but when I sanded it, uh, the epoxy would just melt underneath uh, from, the, from the sandpaper, it would get clogged up. So I took out uh, my angle grinder and put on a, a sanding disc and I had to take it down to the bare wood. And then I spent another four hours sanding everything to get it nice and flat again. And then this time, once it was done, I put uh, this finish of boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits, and polyurethane. And then I took some more epoxy and I, I thickened it here. We added a little sawdust in it because I didn't want it to run off the edges. And then I could place the tops on there. And again, I weighted those down. And then once I weighted those down, then I could screw in on the sides and get them. Uh, I, this was really important because then I could work on it while the epoxy was curing. I had those washers there so that the screws wouldn't go all the way through. 
And then I just had a few more things to do. I attached these magnets on the bottom to keep the legs from coming loose when I closed the, the table up. That worked pretty well. And I attached these window sashes, uh, window sash closures, I guess is what they're called, to the ends. And this helps to keep it closed while I am transporting it or when I'm storing it. And then I needed some handles on the end. So I drilled some holes and then I took this 5 8 inch rope, threaded it through, tied a knot on either side, on the inside, and then I had my handle. And I did that for both sides of the table. Finally, I put in this sort of a French cleat system to have these pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood so that when I go to open the table, it stays flat on me and doesn't try to fold up on me. So all in all, I'm happy with the end result. There are some areas of this table that I'm not real happy with. Some of the varnish is from that I first applied is still in some of those corners I couldn't quite get out. But uh, overall, it'll be a, a very nice table. It looks nice. It is heavy. I will say it's a it's a, a bit heavier than, than the table was beforehand, but it does look a lot nicer. In fact, here's the old table, and so you can see how ugly that was, just as a reminder. And this is what it looks like now. My goal is to be able to use it at some of the craft fairs that I go to so that I can display some of my work on it. I think it'll look a lot nicer. Plus, I'll be able to use it around the house when uh, I have guests over. Folds up nicely. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support.